Hey guys, now I've been doing a lot of thinking about NHL 22 and you know, we're getting towards the summer when the game starts to die down. I want to think back and, and do a little retrospective of NHL 22 and the content that was released in 22, but I'm going to need your help. My idea is this, a 32 card bracket to decide without a shadow of a doubt, the worst card release in NHL 22. Now we have to have some parameters because obviously a, a 99 that was released or a high 90s card is going to be better than anything was released at launch. So the parameters I want to set for this are as follows. The value and cost of the card at the time it was released. Obviously, this is going to vary as beginning of the game, a little bit less of an investment as we go down further in the year. The longevity of the card, so how long was it useful if it was useful at all. The attributes, if they matched what the card played like in the game as opposed to what the card actually indicated. And then finally, did it make sense? Obviously, there have been some events that have been released that uh, which is a little bit of a questionable decision when it comes to master set players so when you tie all of that together let's find the 32 worst cards that have been released in nhl 22 now how this will be run is once we have our 32 card bracket or playoff what we will do is on my instagram We'll do a series of stories that you guys will be allowed to vote on. My Instagram is down below. The link is down below. Sleep so this game on Instagram if you haven't followed. Be sure to follow as I will start doing the post once we have our 32 team bracket. And I think this might just be a little bit of fun that we can have. And maybe, you know, going forward, EA will take a look at this and be like, all right, let's never make a card like this ever again. Something like that. So with that being said... I'll kick things off with our first five. So here are my five staple worst cards released in NHL 22. All right, in no order, we're going to kick things off with the team of the year, Adam Fox. Now, base value, this is a phenomenal card. He's 99, essentially everything, has three to every synergy. However, his zone abilities just didn't really play to anything that was beneficial for the actual game. On top of that, there was just no bumping anyone off the puck. I remember back in NHL 21, I was really big on Makar because Makar had a really high rated card pretty much the whole year because I believe he did win team of the year. And because of his high body checking rating, it made up for the fact that he was a little bit smaller. It doesn't seem to be the case in NHL 22. There was just really no bumping anyone off the puck with Adam Fox. And it unfortunate because without truculence, it just seems that smaller defensemen went back to the pre NHL 21 era. And the cost that it took to make Adam Fox at the time was I believe about 800,000 to a million coins and uh, by basically a month later there was already cards I was looking to replace him with I mean I even used Brent Burns as master set player for a large majority of the season over this Adam Fox and when you consider all the other big righties like Dougie Hamilton for example there was just more options available to you than the cost that this card took and it just fell flat in my opinion all right next up is the under 22 master set connor bedard this was one of the more hyped cards when this event came out and this was really the kickstart to the tiered master set portion of nhl 22 which i did think was pretty good it allowed us to get as many as we wanted at 86 overall if you're a free-to-play player uh it was a, a very good introduction into actually getting master set players that came out at you know, the time that the event was launched. However, this one specifically, I was super hyped for this Connor Bedard card. He looked great. He had 94 speed with, with Fly the Zone activated, you know, elite edges, silver wheels, looked like he had all the tools to be a pretty good, fun, right-handed winger. However, he played as if he had 85 speed. And this wasn't just myself. This was the community. For whatever reason, this Connor Bedard card did not match at all what his attributes indicated. And it was a really big letdown because this was, you know, one of the more exciting prospects in all of hockey. And it just did not hit with this 92 overall card at the time that this was released. Next up, who could forget the 90 overall Ryan Kessler team builder card? This was one of the Pacific Division options if you did complete uh, the, you know, the team builder sets required to get him, which was obviously an insane cost at launch of the game i don't know how i lucked out but i mean well i know how I, Vinny danfus was an option for the sharks and he was one of the first sharks that i you know really liked watching when i became a sharks fan so that was who i selected this looked like to be the clear option to take and there was a lot that went on behind we we had talks with the developers the, the community it was almost like this card was taking it's like silver or low gold rated player stats and it's just the card art implemented on top of it there was a big big 
anything about just receiving passes with Ryan Kessler, which would impl which would indicate his offensive awareness stat. That's really what dictates if they can receive a puck well. And he would bobble every single puck that he received at 90 overall at launch of the game. Remember, this is one of the highest rated cards at launch of the game. It was a huge letdown for people in the community and uh, famously one of the worst cards uh, that was released this year. All right, next one. All right, next one up. And this one comes from Twitter. And I completely agree. The X Factor Mark Stone card. Obviously not the most fleet of foot and fastest skater, but he was pretty much unusable since the launch of the game. And one of the better defensive wingers, obviously, in the game, but just brutal to play with in Hockey Ultimate Team. And he really just did not receive any updates. Obviously got hurt, but there was other cards that received charity upgrades where just throughout the year, they gave cards out that were higher rated to, you know, give out the X Factor. There was really no way other than being a, a Golden Knights fan, or maybe you're just a fan of Mark Stone as a whole, to be able to use this card and the cost required to upgrade him because he just really did not provide any value for you at all. His X-Factor ability of Yoink just really was one of the ones that didn't seem to have any impact on the game. Quick Pick was not bad for defenders. Magnetic is pointless because of the high offensive awareness stat. And then Snipe has no proof of it actually improving uh, goal scoring abilities. But nonetheless, when you mix everything together, the X-Factor Mark Stone stone card is one of the worst cards in this game. Now, I will say this. X-Factors as a whole, you could basically put all of the X-Factors there because none of them were worth the cost. However, at some point in the year, at the beginning of the year, X-Factors did have a use and they were, for the most part, the best cards that you could acquire. So that's why I don't want to put them all in there because some of them are brutal. But nonetheless, this Mark Stone card just was never it. And uh, unfortunately, just, uh, you know, on my channel, I talk about, you know, bigger skaters having a really big use, not on wing. And uh, Mark Stone just was not it. And then famously, the launch first event, Superstar Origins, the first event at NHL 22, we receive potentially you know, one of the worst cards that we've had in years in just the terms of what it looked like in the build and everything that it had the potential to be. And the 91 Yarmir Yager, speed at 88, you have to remember, this is October when speed was way down. He felt like he was an 80 overall skater. His shot, which was in the high 90s, and again, this is October. He could not score consistently for a large portion of the player base. Unstoppable force on him didn't seem to do anything. This was just all around a mess, and uh, he's going to start out in the guaranteed among the worst players or cards in NHL 22, which is obviously a huge letdown because, I mean, it's Yarmir Yager. So, guys, we have our starting point. Those are the five, in my opinion, I think belong on the list. Let me know if you disagree or agree. I think the Adam Fox one might spark a little bit of a debate, but I used that card for, like, 200 games, and I know a lot of people that did the same thing just could not use him effectively obviously offensively he was half decent but for the cost involved and the, all the resources you had to lock up for a team of the year card at the time just not really it so if you're interested post down below your comments on what you think among the worst cards in nhl 22 also you can hit me up by posting a twitter thread this will all be posted on instagram once we have our 32 field and i will give you guys an update once we have our 32 cards might only do 16 will depends we'll see on comments down below Thank Thank you guys again for watching. I'm excited to find out the worst cards of NHL 22. I'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys.